This topic is about quadrilaterals. How to construct a quadrilateral? So before the construction part of quadrilateral, basically we will see what exactly is a quadrilateral and its various other properties and what are the different types of quadrilaterals we have in mathematics. So we are going to discuss all these things in a step by step process. So firstly, let me start with quadrilateral. So the definition of a quadrilateral states that it is a four sided closed figure. So when I say a four sided closed figure, say I have something like this. So this is a quadrilateral. So I usually denote the vertices with A, B, C and D. Now in this case, I identify that there are four sides which are closed and there are four angles which are at each corners of the given figure and there are two different lines which we exclusively join from the opposite sides and are called the diagonals. So these two are called the diagonals. So these are the sides, these are the angles and these are the diagonals. So a quadrilateral has four sides, four angles and two diagonals. So diagonals are two in number, angles are four in number, sides are four in number. So this is the basic structure of a quadrilateral. Now one thing I have to note here is all sides may or may not be equal. The first property of a quadrilateral states that all sides may or may not be equal. Similarly, all angles may or may not be equal. It depends on the given conditions. May or may not be equal. The diagonals also may or may not be equal. May not be equal. If they are equal, they are given different names, which we are going to see in the next session. So when they are equal, what are the different types of quadrilaterals which we have <coughs> in mathematics? So before this, let's discuss how the different types of quadrilaterals are constructed. Now there are different types of quadrilaterals in mathematics. The first one to start with is so what kind of a quadrilateral is a trapezium? A four sided figure. So there are different types of quadrilaterals. So let's start with the first type of quadrilateral which is called trapezium and let's see how the definition states. So a quadrilateral is called a trapezium if one of the pair of sides are parallel. So there must be one pair of sides of the entire quadrilateral which must be parallel. So as I find in this diagram, this pair is parallel to this. So this side is parallel to this. So this is one of the pair which is parallel pair which makes this called a trapezium. Now identify that this and this are not parallel. So for a trapezium, one pair of sides must be parallel that is the condition for trapezium yes so this is a quadrilateral which is a trapezium in which one pair of sides are parallel next my second type of quadrilateral is called parallelogram so a quadrilateral is called a parallelogram if two pairs of sides are parallel so one pair of sides are parallel is a trapezium two pairs of sides are parallel is a parallelogram it has been derived from trapezium, but the other additional condition being that instead of one pair, the two of the pairs of sides must be parallel. So as I find that this is one of the pair which is parallel and this is also the next pair which is also parallel. So in this case, we get a parallelogram. So I find the definition as two pairs of sides are parallel 
then that quadrilateral is called parallel low crown. Yes. And one more thing which I note as a geometrical property here is that if I draw the diagonals, this is an identified property in parallelogram. If you join the diagonals, this intersection of the diagonals exactly meets at the midpoint. So here it states that diagonals bisect each other. So diagonals bisect each other in case of a parallelogram where one of the diagonal cuts the other diagonal exactly at the middle point. So this is an identified property in parallelogram along with its definition which states, which states that two pairs of sides are parallel and the diagonals bisect each other. Of course the diagonals are not equal, one of the diagonal will be longer and the other diagonal will be shorter but the identified mathematical property is that in case of a parallelogram diagonals bisect each other. So now that we have discussed about a trapezium and a parallelogram, let's also see how they are related. Now interestingly I say that every parallelogram is a trapezium but every trapezium is not a parallelogram because in case of a parallelogram two pairs of sides are parallel in case of a trapezium one pair of sides is parallel so every parallelogram can be considered as a trapezium because one of its sides is assumed as parallel so in that case every parallelogram is a trapezium but every trapezium is not is not a parallelogram also identify that in case of parallelogram when opposite sides are parallel their si sides are also equal because the parallelity condition proves the equality so for when opposite sides are parallel obviously the opposite sides of a parallelogram are also equal now the third type of quadrilateral which i identify after the parallelogram and the trapezium is a rectangle. Now a rectangle is a quadrilateral which is assumed to be derived from parallelogram with only one additional condition with along with the properties which already satisfied with the parallelogram. So a parallelogram a rectangle is derived from a parallelogram with its opposite sides parallel and equal with each angle being 90. So the additional property of a parallelogram with each angle being 90 degrees is what makes a quadrilateral called a rectangle. Say if I have the opposite sides are parallel, two pairs of sides are parallel, they are equal, even in a parallelogram they are equal and each angle is 90 degrees but in case of a parallelogram each angle is not 90 degrees, it is other than 90. So if each angle is 90, that is specifically given the name called a rectangle. So 90 degrees is the one additional condition which makes a parallelogram called a rectangle. So each angle, so I have all four properties, opposite sides are parallel and equal. Each angle is 90 degrees then what about the diagonals what happens to the diagonals let's see the diagonals of a rectangle will be equal and they bisect at the midpoint same as in parallelogram but in a parallelogram the diagonals are not equal but in case of a rectangle the diagonals are equal so when the parallelogram tends to make the diagonals equal it tends to become a rectangle so diagonals are equal and bisect each other. They are equal and they bisect exactly at the midpoint. They bisect each other. They cut at the midpoint. So this is how I identify a rectangle. Now when I see the relation, I see that every rectangle is a parallelogram. because opposite sides, two pairs of sides 
of a rectangle are parallel and equal as similar to this. The only additional property for rectangle being that each angle is 90. Therefore, there is no restriction in making in calling a rectangle to be a parallelogram. So every rectangle is a parallelogram, but every parallelogram cannot be called a rectangle until and unless each of its angle becomes 90 degrees. So this is how I relate between a rectangle and a parallelogram. Now next comes the square. We all know what a square is. So let's also see the different properties in a square. 